In 2010, Blizzard were at the absolute height of their fame and popularity, and they were about to release a sequel to the greatest RTS of all time. But what no one could have known is that the launch of StarCraft II wouldn't just result in a new popular gaming title, it would change the internet forever. So strap on your Segway helmet, because this is the story of how StarCraft II changed the internet forever. Tastos is here, are you ready? My seatbelt's on, my water wings are inflated. Okay, I'm ready to do this, all right? I got my Segway helmet on. Take all the Blink Micro, he's absolutely having to rely. Looks like he might be able to take out this base. Will Serral go for a big fight? He's actually, oh! He's starting to start that building with his observer. I think he might just go straight for it to try and eliminate Jero. It's staying, Blink's away, Blink's over him. Couple more hits and he gets the title of Council. But before we begin, I've got to admit that this is like the third or fourth attempt at this video, partly because this means a lot to me, this story, and partly because it's a story that's hard to tell. It's a story that could be full of boring facts about the history of the internet, the innovations of streaming, the creation of new esports circuits, and the personalities that surround them. And those facts, those people, they do matter. But to me, that's not really the story of StarCraft II. The story of StarCraft II is the weird and strange way that all of those things came together and what that meant to me. I used to have really bad insomnia in my late 20s, but one of the things I would always do is get up at 4 a.m. and just decide to stay up for the rest of the day, drink a cup of coffee, download my Korean software, I can't even remember what the streaming software was called, and tune in to Brood War. And I would watch um, Tasteless Cast Brood War and I just, I loved it. I didn't even really play StarCraft Brood War all that much, but it was just something that I really loved to do. It was like tuning into another world. Way back when YouTube was just a bunch of skit comedians and people freaking out at horror games, tuning in on this esoteric software to watch Brood War live and then maybe check the comments of various StarCraft related forums, it felt alive. And when I look back on it, that passion for live esports that I had and many people had either knowingly or maybe unknowingly is one of the reasons why StarCraft II when it released would become such a success. And when I think about it and I think about that transition from Brood War to StarCraft II, there are two <laughs> or perhaps three, let me explain, names that really come to mind. One is DJ Wheat, AKA Marcus Graham, and the other is the entity known as Tastosis. The two really couldn't have come from more different areas of the internet. Marcus Graham was the guy that was live streaming Quake in a radio broadcast style over early internet radio at huge cost to himself. If you guys remember early internet radio, well, that was a weird place. And that he had the passion, the idea to stream games without even any image quality. Well, sorry, any image at all is just... A little bit crazy, but a little bit genius. And Marcus Graham would go on to be the OG daddy of esports casting. He casted everything from Street Fighter, Quake, StarCraft II. If you followed early esports on the internet in 2009, 2010, he was just literally everywhere. I often found myself saying at the time, who the hell is this guy and why is he everywhere? But that's not just how he changed the internet. Marcus Graham changed the internet because a little company called Justin TV, aka Twitch, saw him and would hire him as their creative director or head of creators as I think Twitch calls it. And Marcus Graham would be the head of Twitch during really what many streamers seem to consider its glory days. And on the other hand, you have two different people transformed into a single union, the entity that all us StarCraft fans know as Tastosis. But the two Templars in this Archon ended up in Korea in very different ways. Nick Plot came as a commentator after being frustrated by the commentary during the World Cyber Games when really people didn't understand at all how Brood War worked at even a fundamental level in the West. He began commentating various StarCraft tournaments. Eventually, 
he received an offer from GOM TV who invited him to provide the English commentary for StarCraft Brood War. This is, of course, the aforementioned show that I loved watching late at night. On the other hand, Artosis had come across as one of the few Westerners trying to be competitive in Korean Brood War, alongside people like Idra, who did succeed in actually getting on the TV at one point. I'll see if I can find some footage of that for this video. The two would meet and eventually become friends, and I won't make this into a long biopic on the two of them. But safe to say, when it came time for StarCraft II to launch, Nick Plot made clear that if he was going to continue working with GOM TV, there was no one that would be casting beside him other than his friend Artosis. Then has no guarantee to more viewers or his analysis. We we have no idea. So we I just hmm, how can I trust you guys? But this list is very a uh, good guy. He just said if I if you want to hire me without them, I will keep. So. That was a collaboration that would continue until pretty close to the release of this video about two years ago when Artosis would eventually leave to return to Canada. Uh, it's been the best job you can think of, really. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. I've, I've loved it, and I'll miss everyone in the studio. And <laughs> oh, Artosis, we love you, man. You're great. The GSL, this Korean tournament being broadcast almost daily in English to Westerners, really changed the format of esports. And if you've watched Hearthstone, if you've watched Overwatch, if you've watched all the Western attempts to mimic esports leagues that seem sort of like a weird NFL, a lot of them draw their inspiration from their setup from this initial GSL. The first GSL season was revolutionary. There was nothing like it in esports at that time. And Nick Plot and Dan Stumkovsky Artosis were at the head of it. They changed the internet as we know it. Esports hasn't been the same, but the world of streaming and entertainment has never been the same. But meanwhile, on the other side of the ocean, Nick Tasteless Plot's brother, Sean Plot, was studying an MA in mathematics at Harvey Mudd College. But he too would change the internet, perhaps in an even more profound way. Funny story. So as much as I'm going to miss all my wonderful memories and all my buddies at Mudd, the one thing I'm not going to miss, and many people agree with me, is the Harvey Mudd dating scene. In October of 2009, Day9 would then, using the very early website Livestreaming.com, announce that he would be on Livestreaming.com doing explanatory daily netcasts, netcasts, we didn't call it streaming in those days, of Brood War and explaining various Brood War tactics and strategies to his audience. To say that this early netcast took off would be a radical understatement. Day9 would go on to crash the website almost daily. You see what I did there. With how many viewers would tune into his stream. He would rely he would stream four times a week, often for about two hours in the evening. So this was not the live streaming that we have today, where live streamers will sit on their stream for eight hours a day, seven days a week. You needed to tune into this. But people did. People did in the hundreds. I think he maxed out in the thousands bringing down the website. This was the first live stream. And Day9 was personable. He was educational. This wasn't the sketch comedy that we're all getting from YouTube, although there's nothing wrong with that. It wasn't some guy running through a haunted house screaming. It was a very well-educated teacher who was explaining to you how computer games worked. And you can engage with it. They can use hold position and it sprays out with the fire. That's really useful against Marines because Marines get bunched up right there. But if you're against a medic, a unit you do specifically want to target, for God's sake, right click on it so you can be guaranteed to kill it. If you hit hold position here and even one of these Marines hits the Mutalisks, these Mutalisks will all of a sudden not target the medics. Interact with him and learn about the game. It was a different experience than a lot of any, than anything I'd had on the internet before. Day9 had invented being a streamer. 
but there was another streamer on those early streaming sites, most of which would either fail or be amalgamated into Justin TV, which would then become Twitch TV. And that streamer was the opposite of Day9, where Day9 was your lovable older brother who knows more about math and gameplay tactics than you. This streamer would be controversial, but yet, of anyone covered in this video, he would probably change internet culture more than anyone else. And his name is Stephen Bonnell II. Unlike many streamers in those early days who sought to hide their identity, he just used his full name. And I remember looking at his stream on Team Liquid and thinking, this guy's a moron who shares their full name online and also notes that they're the second. Well, we can't do a full biography of Stephen Bonell the second here. But safe to say, where Day9, the son of Kansas, the good boy of gaming, the guy we all loved, well, Destiny was the guy that everyone loved to hate. Okay, here's the plan. The Overlord will serve as a retard magnet, drawing out the Protoss army. While Day9 forged his streaming career out of educating people about StarCraft II and forming a community around that, Stephen Bonell would do exactly the opposite. Everything would be controversy. His tactics were interesting and his playstyle was unique and there's a place for that on a channel that's not this. But ultimately what made him interesting as a streamer was just the level of his acerbic wit. And if I can get away with adding it to this video without getting completely demonetized, I'll add a section in right now to explain how he played StarCraft 2. Yes, it worked! Kyle, it's a retard magnet! <laughs> if you win, I'm gonna play. But Destiny isn't remembered for his relatively mediocre StarCraft 2 career. He's remembered for his pivot to politics, where he would first present himself as a left-wing progressive, a libertarian, and then eventually be banned from Twitch in reasonably recent times for perceived far-right comments. At least, that's what the rumor mill says. But before that ban, he was one of the most influential streamers on Twitch, he changed the perception of political streaming on Twitch, something that at the launch of the website would have been conceived of as a strange use of the website. The facts of the case, the reason why two people are dead in the Rittenhouse riots is directly because of people like you that stoke the flames and get people upset about policing in the United States over cases where the police were 100% in the right. You are engaging in a form of stochastic terrorism when you are on here stoking these <laughs> flames just as much as somebody like Lauren Southern does. I need of as a strange use of the website and showed a lot of other content creators that you can make large, large sums of money by pandering to your political audience and doing so in an acerbic way. And a lot of these various political commentators that have now worked their way onto major TV channels from YouTube and Twitch really owe their origins and their strategy to Stephen Kenneth Bonnell II. And finally, we get to the most important way that I think StarCraft II changed the internet forever. It created really some of the first parasocial relationships. To say that my life wasn't good during the launch of StarCraft II would be a vast understatement. I can remember while my mother was in prison on launch day, trying to take what money we had and make dinner for my siblings, and then losing to a four-gate Protoss as Zerg and smashing my keyboard against the wall. It wasn't a great time, but I had Tastosis, I had Day 9. I had the community of StarCraft and Team Liquid and people like that around me, sort of, on the internet. And at the time, that was really weird, and I was probably a bit of a weirdo for maybe emotionally relying on it so heavily. But in 2023, the world is just like that now. But StarCraft II really, really changed the internet in creating these characters that people related to, even though they never knew them. The internet, and particularly the gaming community at large, owes so much to StarCraft II for being a pioneer in just the way we relate to almost everything we do online. 
even though now StarCraft 2 is more or less a dead game. Rest in peace, StarCraft 2. If you've watched this long, please do like and subscribe. I apologize for this video. It was a bit of a weird one for me, stepping out of my comfort zone, as it were. And I hope people have enjoyed it. It's difficult to make this kind of content and find your niche in doing it. But if you enjoyed it, you know, well, I'm glad. And I'll see you in the next one.